Hey, welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and thank you for joining me in this video today. And today we're talking about supply chain issues and shortages, the 15 things that you may want to start buying now before the prices increase or the products just aren't there. They've already put a warning out about these certain products. Now, I am not inciting anybody to go out and start hoarding all these products, but if you are going to be going to the store, some of these products you may be able to pick up just a few extra ones of and this way here you save some for somebody else and you're still putting some stuff away in your own pantry not all these products will pertain to everybody that is out there but if it does you may want to take and be aware that they are warning us that these products could be scarce throughout the winter into the following spring so here we go folks all right now we're going to try to get through this list as quick as possible. Cereal, bread, and flour. Because of the Ukraine war and all this kind of stuff, you know, there's a huge shortage going on with all this kind of stuff. And they are warning about the cereal, bread, and flour. So if you're going to be going to the store, you may want to, if you have kids, you might, might want to pick up a few extra boxes of cereal. You can always vacuum seal them yourself with your vacuum sealer and extend a life. Uh, bread, well, this is something that you can buy. You can freeze it. And then flour, I would highly suggest people go out and buy, buy yourself like a 20 pound bag of flour. And this way here, you could break it up and you could vacuum seal it, model or bag it, or however you want to do it. Just make sure it's in an airtight container and you're going to have enough flour, hopefully to get you through until the following spring. And this way here, you'll be all covered. Next is tires. You know, there's a huge shortage of tires, and not only with tires, but just getting the tires moved across the country from all the different ports and stuff. We're coming into winter time. They're already warning about winter tires, and there could be a shortage of these things. So if you are looking to get those winter tires for your vehicle so you can get around in this upcoming winter, you may want to look to buy them now because they may not be available, especially if you have an odd size, a large size, or whatever. You may want to start looking around now for your snow tires for this upcoming winter instead of the day that the snow starts to fly and everybody flocks to the tire store and they don't have any. So it may be something you may want to look into now. Another thing on this list is champagne. Champagne is supposed to be at an all-time record low for this upcoming holiday season so if you are looking to have a party a new year's eve party maybe you're getting married some type of a special party and you're going to be needing champagne uh, these experts actually are suggesting that you pre-buy now and order and get your products now because come the holiday season especially towards new year's eve there will be shortages of champagne dairy products your milk and your butter and all these different types of products. We all know the prices on these things have just been skyrocketing over the last year. It was like somebody lit a fuse under them and there they go. So, you know, if you can buy butter and things of this nature, you can freeze your butter. You can freeze your butter if you vacuum seal it. You can freeze it for a year or more. All right. Milk. Yes, you can freeze milk, but I wouldn't do it for any more than 30 days. Uh, but it can be done. You may look into powdered milk as an emergency alternative. All right. So dairy products are definitely high up on this list. Um, the next on this list is frozen foods, mainly a lot of frozen vegetables and things. Um, the fresh vegetables this year just haven't been the greatest on the shelves. So a lot of people have turned to the frozen vegetables. If you do have room in your freezer. I would highly suggest that if you do eat a lot of vegetables, I would go and buy the frozen vegetables, bring them home, throw them in your vacuum seal bags, vacuum seal them, throw them in the freezer. They're good for a year plus. There you go. Problem solved. Uh, another thing on this list, Christmas trees. They are warning. I actually seen this on my news down here in Florida. If you want a fresh Christmas tree this year, you may not be able to get them in your area. And if you do, you're going to pay top dollar due to floods and fires and all this other stuff that's been going on. So they are urging people that you may want to look into the alternative, go back to the old artificial Christmas tree. But if you're going to do that, you may want to do it now before Christmas gets here because, well, we all know when the Christmas gets here, demand goes up, prices go up, and then you can't get a Christmas tree and then you're stuck with Charlie Brown's Christmas tree in your living room. 
Nobody wants that now, do they? All right, next on this list, tomato products. All right, California has struggled once again between the droughts of fires and everything else that takes place out there in that other country of ours. And we just cannot get the tomato products for any type of tomato, you know, uh, if you want a tomato paste, uh, sauces, uh, tomato pre, any of these type of goods, anything made with tomatoes are, is going to be in very high demand throughout this coming year. And I think that'll probably roll right on through until the spring. And hopefully they'll have a decent uh, winter where they can still grow these products of tomatoes and things and we can get back on track. That is what they are shooting for. But we also have to play with Mother Nature. So we'll see how this plays out. So you might want to get your tomato products. Candy. Candy for Halloween and the upcoming holiday season. Um, Hershey's has already issued a warning to a lot of people out there that they are not going to have enough candy to go around because they're having issues getting cocoa in to make all the chocolate and to make all the different candy bars. So if that's something you're looking for, you may want to go try to go pick it up in your stores now. You can always freeze it until you need to use it for those little trick-or-treaters will be knocking on your door around Halloween. Or if you like to put candy out for the holidays, you can also do that. All right, next on this list is popcorn. Popcorn and corn in general is, well, it popped. We just don't have enough of it to go around. We've had too many bad crops. Uh, we've had too much flooding. We've had too much uh, cold spells and everything else. Everybody got a late start. And things are not rolling along as they should be. So... Popcorn is number one on this list and corn products. And I think this is probably going to run through right till next year because, well, let's just face it, folks. You know, when harvest is done here, we have to wait till spring to replant again. And then we have to hope and pray that we get a good harvest next year. So anything with corn in it could be a very difficult thing to find. So you may want to make sure you're picking up extra of that and putting it away in your survival food, in your pantry um, whatever it may be. All right, olive oil. Olive oil is uh, due to the huge drought and heat waves in Spain and stuff. Uh, olive oil is, well, it's, it's, if you can find it, it's going to be going through the roof. And it's just a fact of life. It doesn't matter if you're on our continent, somebody else's continent, whatever. We're all dealing with a lot of, a lot of the same things. Heat, droughts, cold, wet, floods. This is just killing us all the way around this globe, and it's affecting everything, and olive oil is another one. You can store your olive oil, just so you people do know, up to 20 months in a cool, dry, dark place. So if you can find it, and it's the olive oil that you like, I would highly suggest you pick up an extra bottle at your next trip to the store and store it in a cool, dry, dark place. And this way here, you'll have olive oil for the upcoming months. Next, peaches. All right, peaches had took a huge hit because in the south we had that late spring freeze and that just pff, killed them all off. So, once again, Mother Nature struck and we have to deal with the aftermath. So if you do have peaches or you have a peach tree, lucky you. If you don't, if you can find peaches and if they are pretty decent and good, you may want to look at buying some of those and maybe canning them and putting them up for the winter months. So this way here you have fresh peaches to eat if you are a peach lover. All right, number 13, chickpeas. Chickpeas are on the downside. They're down 20% this year on harvest. So what does that mean for everybody? Well, if you are a vegan or a vegetarian or one of these, or if you just like hummus in general, it's probably going to be very hard to find. So if you can find chickpeas and buy it so that you can make it yourself at your home, at your convenience, you may be ahead of the game. But chickpeas are going to be a thing that's going to be pretty scarce in this upcoming winter into the following spring. Bottled water. Bottled water, water isn't scarce, but the bottles to put them in is so there's a huge shortage of plastic, just like there's a huge shortage of uh, rubber for the tires. And, you know, it just keeps going on and on and on. And this also filters in with the last one, which is the liquor and beer and soda. Uh, anything in glass or plastic, all of a sudden now we just run in a shortage of. It's not we don't have a shortage of the product to put in it. We have a shortage of what to put into the product as far as how are we going to get this from this big vat 
to you in this nice little bottle. Because what I have found, folks, is, you know, we all do our recycling. We all do our part. We all do everything. And you know what they do? Well, they take and they crush all this stuff up, put it in these nice little bales there, and they ship it overseas. So tell me, why can't we just keep all the product here? And this way here, we can make our own bottles, our own plastic bottles, our own tires. We can make all these things ourselves, and we wouldn't be in this predicament. We all could sit back, have a cold beer, a shot, a drink of water, and we'd be doing quite well. We'd have tires to run to the store to buy the goods. Doesn't it kind of make sense? So I'm Survival Preparedness Beginners. I just wanted to bring you this video because you know what, people? There's a lot of stuff that's going on and you all need to be aware and you need to be planning for all this kind of stuff because a lot of it just doesn't make sense to me. But you know what? We have to make sure that we have to send all this stuff over to China so they can make bottles to send them back to us. Doesn't make much sense to me. But hey, who am I? I'm just Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And until next time, I will catch all of you on the flip side.